So it is very important to get knowledge. Knowledge is power. What makes great men, in another way, write this point, there is no great man. There is no great man on the face of the earth. All great men are products of knowledge. When you see me, I'm doing well. It means that there is something that I know that you don't know. And that's the reason every day, each and every week, you must come under me. I must teach you. I must empower you. I must open up how it works for me. But those that have pride, they will die while they are laughing. So, it is knowledge that makes great. The knowledge of something, of marriage, that's what makes your marriage to be sweet. The knowledge of ministry, that's what makes your ministry to be, to begin to produce exploit. Jesus moved so much in knowledge. Even the Bible says at 12 years, the Bible says, then he sat with the Pharisees, the doctors of the law. And the Sadducees. And the Bible says he began to teach them. And teaching is all about knowledge. How much you have swallowed in the scripture. The Bible says he began to teach them about the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And the Bible says the old men. They were so much astonished of the revelation and the insight of this young boy. Which means that knowledge is not having gray hair. We have too many people that, are, that have gray hair, but in the head, they have problems. We have people that are big in stature. They are big in body, but in terms of engine. The engine is too small. God does not want you to grow in body only. God wants you to grow also in knowledge. You must grow in knowledge. From one level, which means knowledge is in degrees. The way God uses me it is determined by how much I know about him the ability and the possibility and that's the reason every time when I stand before an impossible situation physically I don't get moved because I now know I no longer believe you must graduate from a level of believing God. We have too many believers. It's good to be a believer. But it's more good to be a knower. I repeat again. It's more good, it's good to be a believer. But it is more good to be a knower. What I mean is knowledge or the gnosis. In believing God, Abraham believed God. And in the same believing, there was a percentage of doubt that he had to hear from the instruction of the wife. And the wife told him, he said, look, we have been waiting on the promises of the Lord. For quite a long time. Why can't I give you my mid-seven? So that you can have a child with her. With her. 
in believing there is a percentage of doubt. You don't know whether it will happen. And at the same time, you feel like it will happen. You don't know whether you will get married. At the same time, there is another feeling that tells you this thing can work. God does not want you to enter in business with believing him. God does not want you to believe him in, no, in, in business. He does not want you because believing it is, for, it is for Christians. Now we have graduated from a level of Christian. Remember that we grow from one level to another level. Imagine from the time you got born again, this is 43 years, and you are still a Christian. There is no problem to be a Christian, but it becomes a problem if you have been a Christian for a long time. And most of you, you are Christians for a long time. You are qualified to be called Pharisees. Because being a Pharisee is simply dwelling in teachings that you do not apply. So we have a lot of Pharisees in the church. Being a Pharisee is knowing, hearing the word, not applying it. You know the scripture, you, 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 you have read the scripture, but it becomes a problem to know the interpretation of the scripture. That qualifies you to be a Pharisee. And that's the reason we have people that argue, that compromise with the ability of God when it is displayed on the scene. They will even question, even when God comes, even when God comes in their midst, they will question, they will have questions, is this a real God? Is this really God that is using this man? They have heard the power. They have seen the power of God. But to know how God operates, it becomes a problem. So being a Pharisee is simple. Ask him about you a Pharisee. Ask him about you a Pharisee. Look at your neighbor. Are you a Pharisee? Look at them and, sh and, and ask them. Look at them and ask them boldly. They will not do anything to you. Pharisees only dress very nice. Pharisees only dress very nice. They walk very humble. But full of tradition. We have people who are very humble. But their humbleness is full of tradition. So God does not want you to be humble in ignorance. Tell me, but God does not want you to be humble in ignorance. We have people who are very humble in ignorance. And we have people who are humble in knowledge. Two kind of people two kind of personality. So we have too many Pharisees that read the scripture but they don't know how to apply it. They don't know the revelation behind the scripture. And even if when a man of God begins to teach the word, they will still doubt whether it is biblical. Whatever you don't know, you will question, right? Whatever you don't know or whatever you don't understand properly, you will question. So the problem that, the problem why you are questioning 
miracles is that you believe in miracles. You believe in miracles. But you don't know miracles. You don't know miracles whether they can happen. You don't know whether God can raise the dead. But you believe in him. That he can. If they bring a dead person, there will be a percentage of doubt. Knowledge is the ability, right? What is knowledge? Knowledge is the ability of knowing that he will do it. Knowledge is the ability of knowing. Of grasping his potential that he will do it. That's the reason when I tell you that being a Pharisee is simply reading the scripture, seeing what God has said in the Bible, the miracles that Jesus performed, but are still more having doubt. The Pharisees one day the Bible says then Jesus performed a miracle on Sunday. Jesus performed a miracle on Sunday and according to the Mosaic law on Sabbath you are not allowed to work. And the Bible says when Jesus performed the miracle to this man the Bible says the Pharisees and the Sadducees they were annoyed. Lack of knowledge will cause you to be annoyed of things that are, that must help your life. If they had a full understanding, they would have seen the glory of God in the miracle that took place. So, God does not want you to believe him. God wants you to know him. If you read the book of Daniel, chapter 10, the Bible says, but, my, but the people, but the people, but the people that do know, not believe. Which means we differ in operation. There are those that are believing God for a car. <laughs> there are those that are believing God for 100,000 rents. There are those that are believing God for healing. There are those that are believing God for a child. There are those that are believing God for a miracle job. And there are those that know that God has given them a miracle job. Two dimensions of people. Two different levels of understanding. Which means there are people here as they are seated, they are just believing God that God must cancel their debts. That is wrong. That is wrong. God does not want you to believe him. God wants you to know him that he has the ability to cancel your dirts even in your doubtness. But the people that do know they are God, they shall what? They shall do exploit. In other version, the Bible says they shall do great things. So exploit in life is equal to knowledge. Exploit in life. Bigger things in life is equal to knowledge. The Bible says the people that do know that do know they are God. So knowing God is a personal empowerment, right? Knowing God or the gnosis of God is a personal obligation. Right. The knowledge of God is a personal obligation. It is not a group thing. It's not a group thing. It is not a personal, ob uh, it's, 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 it's not a group thing. 
it is a personal empowerment. You need to reach a level, you need to reach a level where you must desire of his knowledge. You must desire to know him, not desire to believe him. You, you began to believe God the day when you got born again. You know, here it is. You began to believe God the day when you got born again. Now, okay, all these years, what have you been doing? You have been believing God for that which is not coming. Okay, you have been believing God for a husband. Are you married? You have been believing God for debt cancellation. As you are still believing God, that's, a, that's more, it's like that's when the dirts are being piled up. The more you continue believing is the more you have problems. That's the reason the Bible says, then, then Sarah and Abraham never staggered. So we differ in operation. There are those that are believing God for a miracle. And there are those that know that even when I am 70 years old, it's going to happen. Even when I'm left alone, even when everybody is against me, even when anybody has, has forsaken me, I just know, I just believe, I just, I just know him that he who has started a good work in me shall watch it until the day of accomplishment. So this is not believing anymore. This is a level of the gnosis now. You know his ability. You know how he operates. You know that he's a faithful. He's what? He's a faithful. He's full of faith. My God. He's full of faith. He's merciful. He's full of mercy. Are you listening to me here? That's knowledge. You can never, let me tell you. Let me, let me tell you. You can never, <laughs> you can never see God on believing. Right. You want to see God, you are still believing. I'm believing for a miracle. You want to see God, you must graduate. That's the reason. Spiritually, there are too many graduations that take place. The knowledge you have, the knowledge you have now, if tomorrow you grasp another thing spiritually, you attain a degree. That's the reason every day when you see me, I am moving from glory to glory, favor to favor. Why? Of the knowledge. Because we are growing in knowledge. As we are growing in knowledge, we are growing in favor. As we are growing in favor, we are growing in knowledge. So the presence of knowledge is the presence of grace. So, believing God is the lowest level. Is the lowest level. Do you think I now, I now believe God? Do you, okay, 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 okay. I want to ask you. Do you think when I come to you, I say to you, I want to speak to you. Do you think it's a level of believing? Huh? That's the reason prophets are not believers. Right. Prophets are not believers. They are more than. Prophets are more than believers. They are more than believers. They don't believe God. They know. They know him. That's the reason they can even speak to him. But you, you because you believe him, even when he comes, even when he comes alive, you will still run away from him. <laughs> Tell neighbor, neighbor, you believe God. Even if when he comes now, you will doubt him. The children of Israel, they were believing in God. Moses, 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 we, wanna, we, we want you to take us to the God that, that you talk to. Take us there. And the Bible says, Moses told them, for seven days, you must sanctify yourself. Don't sleep with your wives. Even your children must be breastfeed. Clean your clothes because you are going to see the Lord. And the Bible says, on the seventh day, they gathered around the mountain. And the Bible says, 
Before God came down, there were thunders, lightnings. The Bible says the children of Israel, they began to complain, Moses, we don't want to talk to God. Talk to him alone. They believed God. God did not even come down. Eh? God did not come down. He just had to send the lightning to represent him. And they were running away from a lightning. What more God himself? There is a level that you must come out from. Come out from the level of believing God. Don't believe God for a shoe. Don't believe God for, a, for, a, for, for, for miracle money. Don't believe God for, for miracle house. No God that is going to give it to you. Are you listening to me here? Know that he, he has the ability. Know that he can still do it. The problem with you, you still believe God. Even when you have come to this church, you believe. You believe. And when your believing has turned down, when you have not received anything here, you will go to another place. So your believing will always cause you to look for things. That's the reason I will stand on a place, on a, on a place that is very silent and I know that God is standing there. But some of you, you will stand on a place that is very silent. If you don't see anything, if you don't see anything, you will leave. That is believing. If you don't see a miracle, you stop believing God. He doesn't bless you. You, you even begin to remind him in prayer. You say, God, God, I'm giving you a second chance. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, God, <laughs> Mr. Ibu is blessing God. He said, God, I bless you. <laughs> he said, God, if I, I give you a second chance, this time if you don't bless me, oh God, you know me. Oh God, you know me. You know me. You know what I can do. I'm going to drink. Have you ever heard such kind of people? Huh? Who say, God, if you, if you don't bless me, I'm going back to the world. Huh? God, if you don't bless me, oh my God, I'm going back to my boyfriend. And God will allow you go. God will allow you go. That is believing. I have reached a level now where I don't believe him. I don't believe him. Even when somebody says, I, 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 I believe God. God is there. No, I don't. I want to see him. I want to, I want to see him. Because knowledge works with sight. Knowledge works with uh, images. Believing, you are believing. Okay, okay. If, imagine if I tell you God is here. What comes in your mind? Where is he? No, I'm, I'm, if I tell you God is here, what comes in your mind? Where? Hey, where is what? So you begin to look around. Is in the speaker? Is in the keyboard? That's believing. You have heard that he's in the house, but I still know you're still looking for him. Where are you? I want to talk to you. Eh? You are looking for God that is already there. Huh? That's a problem of believing. But knowledge, knowledge, knowing God. For example, if I tell you that God is in the house, I'm not telling you based on my believing. I'm telling you based on the knowledge of him. Because when he comes, when he comes, I know how he comes. I know how he comes. So I no longer believe now. He say, okay, now, uh, he, 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 if you see such, such kind of things, uh, which means you must, uh, that is not believing. Believe, believing, believing God, believing God, it is too small. There is doubt. Even when he's in the house, you still doubt where he's standing. But knowing him, when he enters the house, even your heart will bear witness. 
that this one, the one who has entered the house, it is the knowledge of him that gives you conviction of him that he is the one that you are talking to. He's the one that you are speaking to. He's the one who reveals the deeper things of God and bringeth unto his servant the prophets. If your hand said knowledge. Say knowledge. Look, the more knowledgeable you become, is the more grace you acquire. Right? The more knowledgeable you become, is the more grace you acquire. And what is grace? Grace is simply deserving what you don't deserve. Grace is simply deserving what you don't deserve. Or grace is simply breaking earthly laws. The more knowledge you have about God is the more grace you have. Which means <laughs> the level of knowledge it is the level that comes with the grace of God. That's the reason if you read the book of uh, 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 Matthew, Matthew chapter Chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 41 to 42 there. The Bible says, then Jesus grew. Grew. In the spirit. In the spirit. And in the grace. In the grace. But how do you grow in the grace? And how do you grow in the spirit? Hey. How do you grow in the grace? How do you grow in the grace? And how do you grow in the spirit? So knowledge, knowledge does not just make you to acquire things on the earth. Remember the Bible says then Jesus grew in the spirit. He grew by knowledge. So it is the, it is the knowledge of God that deals with carnality. The reason why you are so carnal, the reason why you are not in the spirit, you don't hear. FF. Freedom fighter. Fighting for food. Bring a person who knows God and look at their spiritual life. And bring a person who doesn't know God Look at their spiritual life. There is a difference. A massive, massive difference. So the more knowledge you have is the more you become spiritual. And becoming spiritual is the ability to operate in the spirit. That's the reason Jesus says, Jesus says, a time is coming. A time is coming. A time is coming. And the time is now. That true worshippers Even worship is not about believing. <laughs> Whenever I'm worshiping God, I'm not believing him. I'm, I now know him. I can see him. I can see him changing things. As I'm speaking to him, I can see him speaking to me back. That is knowledge. Worship is all about knowledge. So how do you grow in the spirit? How do you grow in the spirit? So you must force yourself to graduate each and every day. Or you must put yourself on a level of searching in the scripture for knowledge. And the more knowledge you have about him is the more easier it becomes to be spiritual. That's the reason it is very easy for me to operate in the spirit because every day I put myself on an equilibrium of the word of God. I begin to peruse. I peruse. I read scriptures. And when I read scriptures, I pray about them. I want to know more. 
I want to know more. I want to know more about business. I want to know more about prayer. I want to know more about the prophetic. I read books. If you go in my house, you check books that I have, you'll be so shocked. I read books. As I'm reading books, as I'm reading books, revelation is coming. I get my iPad. I'm busy writing. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge, which means there is a higher power that is filling the lower. So, the easiest way to be in the spirit, to see in the spirit, it is to acquire knowledge. And not growing in the spirit, God does not want you to grow in the spirit. <laughs> only. He does not want you to grow in the spirit only. This is a problem with people. You grow in the spirit only. Knowledge does not make you to grow in the spirit only. I don't want to become like Peter. Tell me, I don't want to become like Peter. Shake your neighbor, I don't want to become like Peter. All my viewers, tell your neighbor, I don't want to become like Peter. Being in the spirit, yet so broke. That is the problem of Peter. <laughs> Being in the what? In the what? Speaking in tongues, yet broke. I've never seen people speaking that. Yet on top of it, they are broke. Don't, but don't be broke. If you are next to me, you are broke. I rebuke you. Tell neighbor, tell neighbor, neighbor. You are seated to a general manager. You are seated to a billionaire next to a billionaire. So watch out. If you are poor. I will fire you. I'm telling you, Peter, Peter was so anointed. Very anointed. The man was, was even healing, healing all those that were oppressed by different manner of diseases. But his problem, poverty. How can a man have knowledge yet to be poor? There's something wrong. So God does not want you just to be in the spirit by his knowledge, but he wants you also to acquire things on the earth using his knowledge. But how do you acquire things on the earthly realm? You must apply what you have read. You must apply the knowledge that he has given you. Which means when you have knowledge, when you have received knowledge, it can never work with spirituality. It only helps you to be in the spirit, to receive more, so that on the earthly realm, you can become more potentious and more powerful. But if what you have received, you can't apply it. My brother, with your knowledge, you become like Lazarus. That was a problem of Peter. Peter was, was in the spirit. Too much. Speaking in tongues. The man had the knowledge of the supernatural. But one day the Bible says, on the hour of going to the temple, the Bible says, then on the temple called Beauty, there was a man who was asking alms. And the Bible says when he looked at Peter, he perceived money. There are people when they look at you, they know you have money. But a person who's, who's not having knowledge, who believes that he will have money, he will refuse. He said, no. That's the reason most people who believe that they will have money, they end up not having money. But those that know that I have money, they'll end up having money. Have you discovered, okay, okay. Have you discovered that people see things that you don't, don't see in yourself? Huh? Hey, hey, hey. 
have you discovered that people they are able to know things that are inside you that you don't know huh hey have you discovered that huh <coughs> the man was begging he had to perceive money yet peter did not have the knowledge that he was a millionaire. A beggar could perceive money that this guy who is coming, mm, look at the suit. Kabbalah I believe he was praying in tongues. I'm telling you, I believe this man was even, he was, he was even, he was even excited when he saw, he saw Peter. Because he could see money. The man was ready to receive so disappointing when Peter arrived. When Peter arrived on the scene, his statement, his statement was so disappointing. So devastating. Imagine somebody sees money inside you. He said, you, you know what? When I look at you, I see you as a general manager. I see you as a CEO of MTN. When I look at you, I see you as a company owner. And you respond and say, I believe I will become in future. Peter was so disappointed with his spirituality. He arrived towards this man who was asking Ems. And the Bible says, Peter said, silver and the God. Not out. Silver and the God. And the book of Haggai chapter 2 verse number 7 to 8, the Bible says, God said, silver and the God belongs to me. Peter was carrying Jesus. Huh? Jesus, the honor of God, the honor of diamond, the honor of bronze, the honor of silver, the honor of all manner of precious stones. Peter was carrying inside, but the man physically was poor. He only had only one level of knowledge. The knowledge that would transcend you or transfigure you to become a spiritual person. There are most of you, when you got born again, there was the knowledge that had to change you, to transfigure you into be becoming a spiritual person. That's the reason to, today you are not drinking, you are not womanizing, you are not sleeping in bars. That knowledge is just there for change. But that knowledge on the earth cannot cause you to acquire anything. There is another knowledge that must be applied so that you can get the earthly materials. Now let me tell you something. Do you know that there is a statement that I've heard a lot. A statement. Where people say, oh what I need is God. That's a lie. <laughs> tell neighbor, tell neighbor, tell neighbor. Is it true? That all what you need is God. He said, all what I need is God. Is God. That is a lie. That is a lie. If you, if all what you need is God, why do you want a car? I'm, ask your neighbor, if all what you need is God, why do you want a car? Let God come physically and transport you. What you need is God. That's a lie. You don't need only God. God himself has got different manifestation. He manifests himself in different manifestation. So you received him 
you also need, which means you can never be you can never be satisfied by only God. Huh? You are still refusing. Wait. My teaching is very crucial. How come? How come? Okay. If 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 you only need God, eh? You only, you, you only need God. Ask her about, do, do you only need God? You only need God, eh? When, when God created Adam, it is God himself who created Adam in the garden. But God said, Adam, for the sake of you to enjoy For the sake of you to enjoy, I will do what? I will create. Eh? Which means Adam in the presence of God, he was not satisfied. You are not hearing this. How come in his presence, in his presence, where he is, where there is fullness of joy, yet you are not full, you are, you are not satisfied. And God is saying, in fact, in his presence, God is saw that this man was not happy. So it's a lie, you don't need God only. You need his cars. You need the trees to give you oxygen. Without the trees, no oxygen. Without the water. <laughs> so, it is not only God that you need. So the knowledge, there is the knowledge that makes you to be a spiritual person. And there is another one. That kind of a knowledge is what we call practical knowledge. Practical knowledge. The first one is spiritual knowledge. Spiritual knowledge. That one makes you to be spiritual. It makes you to see in the spirit, to be very sharp, but physically poor. <laughs> Have you discovered that believers are poor? I'm telling you. Most believers are very poor. And I ask myself, why? And God is said, they only have one level. Spiritual knowledge. You only know how to speak in tongues. Rebobo. Rigaga. Vumvu. Vu. Vu. Rakakakaka. Tell me, but you only have one, one level. Tell me, but you only have one level. You can't operate like that. That knowledge, it just makes you to be so spiritual, to be so prayerful, to be in fasting, and when you come out of fasting, hunger will be waiting for you. I've ever seen someone, <laughs> he's from prayer and fasting 40 days, 40 days, he goes home, he checks the fridge, the fridge is saying you did not work. Okay, why did the knowledge, the spiritual knowledge, fill the fridge? Why? Because there is another kind of a knowledge which is for service. And that knowledge, when you apply it, it causes the earth to respond. And when the earth responds, the earth will give you money, the earth will give you gold and diamond. Listen, believers are so poor. More of confession. Oh, we are blessed. We are the head and never the tail. Yet, in the actual sense, you are the tail. So, that kind of a knowledge just makes a person to be so spiritual. 
It is good to acquire this knowledge for communication with God. Because God is spirit and whenever he wants to communicate to you, he communicates to you based on the fundamental principle of his knowledge or spiritual knowledge. You need to... Then what did he have? Spiritual knowledge. So spiritual knowledge can be available, but operational knowledge, if it is not there with your spirituality, you'll be sleeping with anger. Peter said, silver and gold. Listen. He said, the silver and the gold. I don't have. Then what did he have? Spiritual knowledge. He lacked one level of knowledge. Which is called what? Operational knowledge. You know the problem of Peter? Eh? When Jesus was calling Peter, he decided to leave the boat. He was not supposed to leave the boat. <laughs> You're not hearing this. He was not supposed to leave the boat. <laughs> that is a problem with you. When God has called you, you leave everything. Me, when God called, called, called me, I did not leave everything. I left me myself, but everything I left it for other people to manage. That is operational knowledge. Now, look, look, I'm saying the reason why Peter was poor, he had only one level of knowledge. It's because he had left everything. The Bible said then Jesus met Peter, he said, leave what? Leave everything and follow me and I will make you to be a what? A fisher of men. He left the boat, the net, the fish. He went to become a pastor. He went to become a pastor. Me. Nowadays. Even if when you come to me, you say, uh, uh, before I become a pastor. Ha. This is the problem with young men. They just want to become pastors. With spiritual knowledge. Hunger is waiting. Rentals are waiting. God does not pay rentals. God does not pay rentals. God does not pay rentals. Rentals are waiting for you. Monthly. And the landlord, your landlord. Ah, it's not spiritual. <laughs> he will come on the door be like, ko, 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 ko. Jabulo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be like, ko, ko, ko. Jabulo. Urikopi. Urikopi. Ibata chelete. Chelete. It's not spiritual. Now, let me tell you something. Spiritual knowledge, spiritual knowledge makes you to be spiritually alert, spiritually sensitive. But there is another knowledge which is called operational knowledge. And that one, it is for service here on earth. And Jesus had that knowledge. That's the reason even Jesus had the secret, secret partners. The Bible says he had he had the wife, the wife of the worker of uh, 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 Herod, who was supporting Jesus with money. Was it spiritual? Was it spiritual? He had kingdom finances, Jesus, in his ministry. They were giving him money. The man was rich, Jesus. Even the Bible says that the man was sleeping on the up, upstairs with a pillow. You, you are still sleeping as a spiritual man. You are still sleeping on the block. That's the reason angels, they don't want to come again. <laughs> Telling you. That's the reason even Jacob, the angels, they said, will never visit you again. 
Because the man slept on the stone and the angels say, in heaven, we don't sleep on stones. The man Jesus was sleeping on the upper stair, upstairs. Huh? On a nice, 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 nice duvet. Nice, nice couch. You, with your spirituality. Let's go at your house. First, the chair itself, it needs deliverance. That's the reason you must understand that spiritual things, they don't just end spiritually. They must come out from the spiritual into the natural. Don't just remain in the spirit. If you are a spiritual man and you are poor, I'm telling you people will question your anointing. When you are preaching as a man of God, you say, God will bless you, God will bless you. <laughs> I saw, I sent a video. Let me, let me, let me check if I'll find that video. If I'll find that video. Can I have the phone? If I'll find that video, God give me grace. There was a pastor, he's a Nigerian pastor. Did I show you? Huh? The pastor was walking in the street. He was walking in the street with the Bible. He said, God, I want you to give me a car so that I can preach to you very well. Huh? Look, all my friends are embarrassing me. I said, this man, no wonder. He was busy. He was busy. Screaming louder, louder. And beating himself. He said, God, you must give me a car. Look at me. Look at, on the road, a pastor. spiritual does not mean you'll be a millionaire. There is another knowledge that you must acquire which is called operational knowledge. That was the problem of Peter. He did not have this knowledge. He had the anointing yet no money. No money. Anointing without money is annoying. Tell about anointing without money is annoying. Shake your neighbor. Tell them anointing without money is annoying. Shake your neighbor. Anointing without money is annoying. <laughs> anointing without money is very annoying. So this kind of operational knowledge... It is for service here on earth. That's the reason Jesus said, Our Father, let your kingdom come. Eh? Which kingdom? A spiritual kingdom. Let your kingdom come from the heavenly realm. Let it come now on the earthly realm. Which means whatever is found in heaven, whatever is found in the spiritual realm, let it materialize. never see an angel trekking. It's only you. The first one from, from, the, from, from Adam <laughs> till John the Revelator, it is you who has fulfilled the scripture by walking. He said, let your kingdom come. In another way, let me live the way angels live, let me also live here on earth. But you need this knowledge to acquire things. You need this knowledge when you look. I was, I was, I was somebody. The the president, the president of uh, 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 Angola came. We had a meeting. We had a meeting. You know, let me tell you, spiritual people, spiritual people. How do you know spiritual people? When they are entering in the meeting, you hear. Bring a Bible. Bring this. They will take this Bible. Put it in there. Rokopo. 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 President, 
negotiating multi billion contracts, the man is probable. <laughs> Are you listening? Huh? And then with the Bible, in the meeting is opening. <laughs> in the meeting is on Bible. Hey, that is a wrong interpretation. You don't need Bible in the meeting. Spirituality must be applied at your house. When you enter the office now, it is operational knowledge. Are you listening to me here? Walk majestically. Parakusha malamahande. Are you listening to me here? Dress very nice. Take a wonderful tie. Not a tie from Tembisa. Take a wonderful, wonderful tie. A wonderful suit. A wonderful, wonderful shoes. Polish them. Not those that are saluting heaven. Operational knowledge. The Bible said the gift of the man. So this kind of knowledge, it is, it is the knowledge that has the ability to open up doors for you. But the way you look like matters. That's the reason some of you, you will never, you will never, you will never enter the parliament. How can you enter the parliament with your hair like that? With your trousers here, 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 and you're walking like this. <laughs> and then the president sees you say, Oh, disaster. <laughs> Sister, she's entering the parliament place. Like they're chasing her. Ah, what is happening? This knowledge, this, okay, operational knowledge, number one, number one, operational knowledge, number one, gives you excellence of speech. That's the reason, Jesus, ah, Jesus, this man, if, if Jesus could come here and talk to you, ha, huh, some of you, Jesus had this sweet talk. That's the reason, even before he makes you to be born again, he will promise you. <laughs> That's the reason Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah, he stood at one point, he said, God, if I had known that you are like this, I wouldn't have accepted. Jeremiah said, I guess the first day that I came out of my mother's womb, because God, you deceived me. When a God wants to call you, he will first show you things. He will show you. And when you accept, he will take you through process. Take you through process. He's checking your heart now. Checking your heart. You go through this, you graduate. You go through another thing, you graduate. Until now, he sees your heart. He said, this one, she's ready. Jesus had a sweet talk, smooth speech. You must ask for the spirit of God, for the spirit of excellence of the tongue. That's the reason you can't, even a customer, even a customer when he comes at your place, you can't negotiate. The man is from United say, hey, what's up, man? Uh, where are you coming from? You are speaking Igbo. Hey, hey, Kedu Odema. What is the problem? Demanding English. Give him what he wants. That's operational knowledge. Operational knowledge. You know what, I, what I'm doing here? Huh? Do you know what I'm doing here? I know what I'm giving you. Because your spirit has approved. That's the reason. You just want to hear more. You just want to hear more. No one is sleeping here. If you sleep, this message itself is a pill of deliverance. Now, smooth speech. Say smooth speech. Know how to negotiate. Nego 
It's not sin. Oh, some people they, they think to negotiate is sin. Where is it written? That is that is operational knowledge. For example, I want to buy a land. I want to buy a land. I want to buy a land before I buy. It's not stinginess. Before I buy, I check other places. Operational knowledge. I check. I check. Okay. You, you are saying you, you, you are saying that I, I must give you uh, uh, on, on this land four million. Four million for what? Eh? Tell me for what? Show me. Show me the value of this property. Huh? Show me the value. You bought it at eight hundred thousand rands. You are telling me to buy it at four four million for what? I'm going. And uh, as I'm going, I'm showing him cash. You're not hearing this here. <laughs> Show your enemies cash because they want it. May I go to a place like this, the car dealer, with money, money. Pa. I said, sir, how much is this car? He said, no, uh, 600. I said, no, I can't buy it like this. Why? Huh? No. This car, check the value is like this. Is like this. I, as I'm speaking, I know already the price. I'm not speaking about spiritual things here. This is business language. Operational knowledge is different from spiritual knowledge. That's the reason. Whatever I am doing here, I'm trying to combine the two. I'm trying to combine spiritual knowledge and operational knowledge. What I'm functioning with now, this is operational knowledge. Because if I don't function with this, it will be boring. So I ask, how much is this car? Oh, no. It's uh, uh, 500. I said, no, I don't have. I've got 300. 300. 1,000. Uh, is it EFT or what? I said, cash. I said, this is the money. And I leave my phone number. He said, if you are ready, you will call me. <laughs> if you are ready, you what? Who doesn't want cash? Who? But the problem is that you go empty. Just go there with your rebobo. Ida. <laughs> no! It doesn't work like that. You need operational knowledge with smooth talk. The power of death and the life lies on your tongue. So there is the power of negotiation using the operational knowledge. Some of you are afraid to negotiate. You just buy anything. Because it's nice you buy. You buy. Someone brings a bill. Bah! You just, because you have money, you must remove money. That's the reason you're becoming poor. I used to have that problem in church. In church. And I said, oh, hey, hey. so you were looking at me like I'm a more a spiritual man. I said, wait, I'm putting operational knowledge. I will put a system now, petty cash. You want cash in the church. You must go and apply. Nothing like, you know, the Holy Spirit told me that, you know, we must take this. To Nothing like that. We are not refusing to give you money, but show us where it is going. Show us. And what property, what property have you bought? Show us the receipt. Operational knowledge. This, let me tell you, if you are a company owner, you must be very tough. Very tough. The day when that company will close, you will see how your, your, what, your workers will laugh at you. You will see. You will see. They are not laughing at you because you are a general. But wait when you become the same level. Imagine one day. The reason why, you know, <coughs> that's the reason the Bible says a rich man has many friends. And a poor man has few friends. Even when he wants to be close, they run away from him because poverty is like leprosy. <laughs> ah. Say operational knowledge. Don't buy anything. Try to negotiate. 
When we entered this building, when we entered this building, the owner of this building needed some certain amount, and I told him, I said, I don't have it. I told him. I had the ability to give him, but I also, I was looking at my budget and my responsibility that I have. Yes, I'm a spiritual man. Yes, I'm a spiritual man. But how come am I negotiating? Is it a sin to negotiate? Where is it written? That's the reason most of you are buying things from, you are buying th property from China. Cheap but expensive. <laughs> Not about cheap but expensive. <laughs> China. They make the exactly Mercedes. MG. The price, 900,000 rands. In China, 100,000 rands. You go and buy from China. Yes, it is cheap. But the maintenance, it will cost you. That's the reason most of you, you must have what we call operational knowledge before you buy something. Look at the quality. Look at the quality. Look at the quality. Don't just buy anything. Look at the quality. That's the reason me, I love strong things. I would rather wait, I would rather wait and buy something that will keep us for the rest of our lives. I don't want to continue buying, to continue buying. That I don't like. Even in the house as a woman, you must have operational knowledge. Don't buy food every day. Women, I'm talking to you. Don't buy food every day. It's a big problem. Have a budget, a monthly budget. This is operational knowledge. A monthly budget. Buy all the groceries. Put them in the fridge. You just buy every day. You buy chicken. Sausage. There, there, you know, there are some... I, there are some certain people by their house is like, is like a restaurant. They eat everything. Have a budget. You know that this month we eat we, we eat such kind, uh, uh, we, this is our budget for this month and this is our expenditure. You spend according to the budget. I'm a spiritual man. I'm a spiritual man. In my house I have a budget. I have a budget. I have a church. I have a church. I have pastors. I have pastors. I have the press team members. I've got the media. I've got the media. I've got companies. I've got my wife. I've got my son. I've got other branches. All of them, they are around me. So if I have bad management, at the end of it, my anointing will annoy me. Bad management closes up churches. That's the reason. If it is to close some certain people, no more to give us service is better. Whatever you can, let, let me tell you, write this. Whatever you cannot afford, don't buy it. Whatever you cannot afford, don't buy it. It means that at that time, you don't have the ability to buy it. That's the reason I made up a vow. I said, whatever God cannot give me, may I not have it. Right? Whatever God cannot give me, may I not have it. It's very simple. Whatever God cannot give you, may you not have it. Whatever I can give you, may you have it. So whatever you have, you need. Oh. That which you have, you need it. And that which you don't have, you don't need it. So if you don't have a car, it is a sign that you don't need a car at that time. <laughs> are you listening? Hey, are you listening? If you don't have a what? A car is a sign already that at that moment you don't need what? You don't need a car. It does not mean you not have a car. At that time, you don't need it. 
Because if it, if it comes, it will give you problem. That's the reason. Most of you, you are having cars. You are having cars that you cannot maintain. You begin to ask for fewer money. <laughs> then why did you buy the car? Why did you buy the car? Huh? So the car is a bad debt. It's better you sell it. Have you heard what the teacher is talking about? Yes. Why do you want to look beautiful when you don't have money? No, I'm telling you. Huh? Why do you want to look beautiful when you don't have money? Huh? So, it's all about management. Man, if you, you, if you have little, manage the little. Look beautiful at your level. There's a certain child, a, a girl, she's, she's in grade 7. Grade 7. Ha! She applied makeup, makeup. She looked like, oh, like, 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 like she works for the president. And she was walking majestically. I look at her. I said, my daughter, do you work? I said, Papa, no. I said, no wonder. No, I said, no wonder. Because you, you look like a worker. There's no need for you to work because <coughs> what your body is consuming is enough salary. Is a salary of somebody. Management. There are some of you, you just get 5,000 red. But you, you, my God, your face consumes more. Powder, lipstick, eye rashes, those ones for sticking. <laughs> those ones for what? Uh -uh, I'm giving you the budget here. I'm giving you the budget. Eye rashes, Hair, Brazilian hair. Do you know how much is Brazilian hair? Brazilian hair is 5,000 reds. Huh? Nails, nails, it is 1,000 reds. Huh? Eyelashes is 500 reds. Huh? Lipstick, 500, is it 500 kisses or what? <laughs> it is 1,000 reds. You calculate plus lotion. Lotion is about 500 reds. Calculate. Transportation, fuel. On top of that, put on the clothes that you are putting on. On top of that, plus perfume. That's the reason men die very fast. <laughs> they die very fast because the responsibility is too much. So the man said, it's better I die. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I, have you discovered that women live long than men? I'm telling you. You know, with men, with men, let me tell you, with men it is very easy to manage. It's very easy. Like, look, let me show you. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. I'm not a very difficult, complicated person. I'm not. I put on what is on my level. You see, when you look at me, when you look at me, the reason why God hides me from some certain mistakes is because I minister under the anointing. So under the anointing, even when I put on a shoe of 500, it will look like 5,000. So it is only me who knows. Yes, it is only what? Me who knows. It is part of what? Management. Before you buy, try to investigate. And don't spend over your size. 
Can I say those who are married? Lift up your hands. You're married. Drop your hands. Men, if you have a wife, I'm giving you this. If you have a wife, listen, my son. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have a wife, that demands of what is not budgeted. She's a Delilah. Because being a Delilah is not, is not just, is not just uh, 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 selling a person. It's misusing resources. That's the reason your husband is finished. If you are a good woman, you would have built your, your house with a little. But whatever, whatever comes, you, 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 you take it to food. A good woman must have the mind to invest. It's a problem. Another man gave the wife money. The wife took the whole money and went and gave the relatives. The man asked for the money. The, the, the woman said, I gave my relatives. The man collapsed and died. Praise God. Say management. Shake your neighbor. Tell them management. Tell them about management. Tell them about management. I'm also managing my, my lips. It's part of management. Hallelujah. It's all about management. Tell them about management. Now, sweet speech. Whenever you are doing business, my daughter... Come here, stand up. Imagine I'm in your office in your office. Hello, I want this shoe. I want this shoe. How much is this shoe? Huh? 1,005. 1,005. Yes, Papa. Where is it from? Italy. Huh? What quality? What quality? Um hundred percent genuine leather. Ah, but last time, you know, I bought shoes, you know, in this place, in this place, you know, they did not last even two days. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, I will not buy. <laughs> I'll not buy. I'll not buy. I'll not buy. I'll not buy. Huh? I'm going. I'm going. We have, we have a new importer. Huh? We have a new importer. Ah, but you disappointed me last time. You know, I bought, you know I've been buying things from my... This one is very shop. good. He's got a, a good record. Good record? Yes, Papa. Ah, so you mean if I... <laughs> oh. you, mean, you mean if I buy, it will last long? Yes, Papa. Huh? It will. Now, let me show you something. Your problem. And now, I've known your problem. When you are doing business. Okay. Come. Come. Give her the microphone. This is now my shop. That's the reason all of you here, you have entered my territory. I can do anything here. Prophesy what and what, what and what. Why? Because it's my territory. When I go to your house, to your house because I know it's your what? It's your territory. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, ask. Okay, I bought the shoe last week. It has already torn on the side. It's already torn? Yes. Oh, wh what kind of I a shoe? I want to return it. What kind of a shoe did you buy? Um, a men's shoe. A men's shoe? Leather. Oh. Is, it, is it leather? Yes, it was uh, written 100%. No, we discovered, we discovered that that shoe had a problem and uh, we are so sorry. <laughs> Power! We, 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 we are so sorry. We discovered that uh, uh, the people that brought the shoe, they told us uh, 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 that the shoe had a problem. Okay, but uh, nevertheless, we are so sorry. We can, give you, we can give you another one, another one for free, so that next time when you come, you can have trust in us. Because whenever you disappoint a customer once, he will never come to your shop. So truthfulness, now he's complaining about what? The torn shoe. shoe. So don't just, don't just, don't, don't look like you are not concerned. No, talk about it. Say, yes, I know. In fact, make him feel like you know. Say, yes, we know. 
Even there was another person who came here with the same problem. These shoes are having problem. <laughs> but we know, we know what to do. We have latest shoes. The person is going to trust you on the basis of your honestiness. Power. Some of you, you buy something from China, you say it's from Germany. From China, you say from what? German. Huh? From German, you say it's from Bangkok. Be honesty. Have you heard? Yes, Papa. So, as you are honesty, you must also pray for the grip. Okay. Continue talking. Continue asking me what you, you want to buy in my shop. How am I sure that the, the pair that you are giving me is yeah, going to last? Yeah, come over, come over. I want to show you. This is a new pair. This is a very strong, strong. This, this, the label is Gucci. Gucci. Okay. And you know, if you talk about Gucci, you know, it's very good for men. It's very good for, are you married? <laughs> no, I'm not. This is good for your husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I've done? Huh? So I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm asking some questions that must open up their heart of my customer so that the customer might feel at home to buy. And not only feeling at home, but there must be a point of developing a relationship. A long-time relationship establishes a strong business. That's the reason. The problem with you is that you do business for one day. You don't even take the number. You don't even call them. You don't even invite them for the merchandise that you have brought. There must be a database for all your customers. You bring new merchandise, you give them some calls. You say, okay, my brother, my sister, we brought new things. Come and see. And when they come, if you are in a position of maybe packaging even some cakes, as they are maybe window shopping, window shopping, in your shop, they are busy enjoying the cake. As they are eating, you say, Paruka diale edia, suka, you will leave money. In this shop, you shall leave money. That's the way. Grow. You are selling tomato. Package your tomato very well. And don't speak like a tomato woman. Speak like a CEO of that business. God bless you. Put it to my hands. The last thing. The last thing. Operational knowledge. Goes number one with uh, uh, smooth smooth speech. Number two. Boldness. 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 Bold. You know, most of you, you are not bold. You are even afraid to go and look for your own job. You are afraid. They said, no, I'm not qualified. Who told you you are not qualified? Who told you? There is no shop, there is no office that when I enter, I'm intimidated. Nowhere. The moment I step the office of somebody, he himself, he will know and say, mm, this guy, even my work itself, it will show you that this guy is not a small guy. You are going to negotiate for massive contracts. Walk majestically, chest out. Your voice well packaged. Your dressing intact. And well displayed. Boldness. I was meeting I was meeting uh, uh, the president of Mozambique. Me, I don't bow down to any president. I'm the president of Holy Ghost Embassy. There's no way it's written that a president must bow down to another president. It's not written. In fact, to him, you'll be fired very soon. And me, I'll still remain. And after he's fired, he will come for prayer. 
So prophets, I'm telling you, prophets, they don't bow down to any president. They don't bow down. Because they have the power to put president into power. That's the reason you see when there's election, most politicians, they run to church. Why? All this time they're in buzz. But during time for election, is what? Inkulunkulu. <laughs> Be bored. Tell them about be bored. That's one of the spirit that God has given me. When the Lord called me, he said you are bored as a lion. Stronger than a knot. Wiser than the wisest. Be bored. You are a woman. You know there's some certain women, they are just underlated by, by men. Who told you that if you're a woman, you can't work in the mind? Who told you that if you're a woman, you can't be you can't join politics. We want politicians in this church. Amen. Oh, you say that politics is a dirty game. Who told you? Politics is not a dirty game. Politics is not a what? It's not a dirty game. But if you don't know how to play it, you will make politics to be a dirty game. So we need politicians. Do you know that Daniel was a politician. At the same time, he was a prophet. At the same time, he was a minister. <laughs> Daniel was a prophet, a politician, and a minister. You, only a prophet. The time has come that the church of Jesus Christ must enter politics and the roof. That's the reason. We don't have people when, 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 when a massive, massive, uh, uh, a wicked, a wicked minister, a wicked minister arises, he has been anointed by the devil. He will just pass on a, a, a diabolic law to punish the church. If we have people in, the, in, the, in politics, they have the ability to arise and they say, minister, this is wrong, this is wrong. But we don't have voices. Everyone is afraid of politics. I was saying, what is happening in Zambia? What is happening in Zambia? What is happening in Zambia? Where the minister has, has said that uh, 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 for people to, to open the church, they must have 500, 500 what? 500 members. Where is it written? 500 members. And a pastor, a pastor for him to start a church, he must have a what? Huh? Degree. Degree in what? Witchcraft. Degree in what? In witchcraft. What about all these witch doctors, witch doctors who are practicing herbalism? Are they licensed? Where is it written that a preacher, a preacher of the gospel must, must have a license to preach the gospel? The license that we have is the power of God. So whatever is happening in Zambia, whatever is happening in Zambia, whatever is happening in Zambia, it must change. The body of Christ must come together. Must come together. Zambia is not a religious country. Zambia is a Christian nation. We are not religious people. We are spiritual people. So whatever is happening in Zambia, and I'm speaking this, I'm speaking this, I'm speaking this to all those that are watching. If you are a Zambian, if you are a Zambian, I'm speaking as a prophet, as a prophet, as a voice. Zambia is not a religious, a religious country. Zambia is a Christian nation. This is an attack on our country where some team, the team of people, the team of people, they have just gathered against the prophetic ministry. Against the prophetic ministry because, because the prophetic ministry is taking people. Listen, no one has members. No pastor, no prophet, no apostle, no bishop, no pastor has members. All members belong to Jesus Christ. In fact, even as prophets, even you bishop, you are a member of Jesus Christ. Amen. So why must we begin to fight mem for, for membership? Membership. Membership. License. License in Zambia. What about all these men of God? What about all these men of God? Those who are not educated. What, are they, what have they been preaching with? And now today, there is a license. 
As a reason in Zambia, if we are not very careful in Zambia, there will be a lot of thieves. A lot of thieves, a lot of catastrophe will happen in Zambia. If Zambia is not ready to obey the instruction of God, it's not a religious country. Zambia is a Christian nation. The whole church, the whole church must come together and intercede for the land of Zambia. There is already an attack in the body of Christ. And most people, they can't see it. It takes spiritual people. It takes mature people in the spirit to say, let's forsake our differences. Let's come together and pray for Zambia. And as you know, begin to, this, 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 this. No, it doesn't work. There is, a, there is a day. There is a day which is called what? Prayer. Is it prayer day? 18th, 18th of October. The whole nation, the whole nation, they gather to pray. To pray for what? Is it only pastors? Is it only apostles? Is it only bishops? Is it only teachers? It is the body of Christ. They gather for the sake of the liberation of Zambia. Why can't we come together as the body of Christ? Speak with one language. That's the reason. There is a problem in the body of Christ because everyone is for himself. Everyone. We have a team of bishops, team of apostles, team of prophets, team of uh, uh, teachers, team of uh, 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 pastors. Where is it written in the Bible? That is satanic. It's very satanic. We are not called to fight. We are called to build. Let's build our country. Let's have one heart. Let's have the heart for each other. Without love, it is impossible to please God. If you say that you are a man of God, then you don't have love. The time for judgment is coming. Put the two hands for Jesus. What I'm saying, you will see it tomorrow in the news. You will see it. And I've spoken it raw. I'm not even afraid. I've spoken it under the power of the Holy Ghost. We are prophets to bring unity in the body of Christ. Not to bring destruction. To bring unity. To bring unity. To bring unity. Oh, Jesus. To bring unity. We work together. You are my brother. Why must you fight me? Why? Huh? Why must you block me? Why? my brother, why must you desire evil for me? Why? Love is the greatest. There is no great man apart from the personality of love. So all those that are watching, I want us to pray for Zambia. Whatever is happening in Zambia, the Lord has showed me something. The Lord showed me the catastrophe that is happening in Zambia. I was raised up in Zambia. I was raised up in Zambia. Born in Zambia. Did my education in Zambia. And if there is a problem in Zambia, then us men of God must arise in prayer. The same way we pray for our country, for our president. Let's pray for each other. Let's pray for our president. Let's pray that God must give him wisdom, strength. It's not easy. The Bible says, the Lord shall give you leaders according to his own heart. Your duty is just to support. Whatever is happening, all this confusion, 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 what you don't understand, what you don't understand is that the devil is in your midst. Let's pray for one another. And God will help Zambia. Zambia is a Christian nation, not a religious nation.
God bless you. I felt like crying. I felt like crying. I felt like crying. I felt like crying. To see how people, how men of God get persecuted for the sake of the gospel. Some of us were raised up because of God. Not that we needed anything. We were raised up because of God. If it was not because of this God, we wouldn't have been ministering the word. How many people have been blessed through the ministry? Thousands of people. Uncountable. How many people have been healed from cancer, from HIV, from diabetes? Uncountable. God is watching and the judgment is near. If my people that are called by my name, if they shall humble themselves and they seek my face, I'm going to hear from heaven and I'm going to come down and I will deliver their land. God wants to deliver our land as Zambians. to deliver our land. Let's allow him. Let's allow him. God bless you. Put your two hands for Jesus. I've never felt I've never felt like this before. I felt very annoyed in the spirit. But let the spirit of God do his own will in Zambia. Will not allow will not allow anything. not allow anything to attack any nation. That's the reason the Bible says pray for your nation because the enemy is at war. He's at war. The enemy is not happy. Do you think the enemy is happy that you, you are in South Africa? Do you think that the enemy is happy that you are in Zambia? He's not happy. That's the reason every time speak less. Speak less negative about your country and pray more about your country. Speak less. Don't speak evil about your country. You are coming from your country. You are speaking evil. You are speaking evil. Speak good. Pray more. Pray for your leaders. Pray for your president. And you will see there is a blessing of every country. There is a blessing. That's the reason if there is a problem, I'm able to call I'm able to call my ambassador here in South Africa. I'm representing my country here and also you, you are representing your country. The Lord loves our nations and the devil, he will not destroy our nations. Rise up. I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to pray for Zambia. For five Five seconds. All those that are watching, you're watching me on DDTV Africa. I want you to lift up your hands right now and I want you to pray for Zambia. I want you to pray for Zambia. I'm not a politician. I'm not a politician. And I don't intend to be a politician. I'm a prophet of God. God has sent me to bring peace. To bring peace and to speak peace upon the land of Zambia. As a Zambian, as a Zambian here in South Africa, I have the right to pray for my own country. And I urge everyone, wherever you are, wherever you're watching us from, I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to cry for the peace of Zambia, for the deliverance of Zambia. Lift up your hands. The Bible said the prayer of a righteous man availeth. Lift your hands wherever you are and begin to pray for Zambia. Lord, we decree and we declare that Zambia is a Christian nation. We decree and we declare that Zambia will never be the same again. I rebuke every attack upon the land of Zambia. I rebuke every political confusion. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, we stand as a voice 
we stand as a voice we pray for the president we pray for the leaders we pray for the ministers we declare God's wisdom God's understanding God's anointing in the name of Jesus the name that is above every other name we rebuke every wind of confusion we rebuke every spirit that has been assigned to castrate all manner of diseases and confusion among the people of Zambia I rebuke it I speak peace I speak peace upon Zambia I speak deliverance upon Zambia in the name of Jesus 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 Zambia shall be saved Zambia shall be saved Zambia shall be saved no plan of the enemy assigned against Zambia shall prosper we condemn we rebuke we destroy every plan of the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of Jesus Lord you say in your word that I ask for the nation then I'm gonna give you nations we declare that Zambia is a blessed nation Zambia is a favored nation in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus I pray for every pastor in Zambia I pray for every apostle in Zambia I pray for every prophet I pray for every pastor I pray for every evangelist that there shall be unity in the body in the body of Christ in the name of Jesus 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 Lord we lift up the flag of Zambia we lift up the flag of Zambia before you no more confusion in the name of Jesus we speak the Spirit of God upon the cabinet we speak the Spirit of God upon every minister we speak the Spirit of God upon people of Zambia in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus wherever you are lift up your hands wherever you are pray for Zambia pray for Zambia the Bible says the prayer of the righteous man we decree and we declare no more confusion no more confusion no more confusion in the body of Christ no more confusion I pray Lord for my president I pray for your hand to be upon him in the name of Jesus 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 more wisdom more knowledge more knowledge more life long life in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus lift up your hands wherever you are shout Zambia Zambia shall be saved lift your voice say Zambia Zambia we prophesy to you we prophesy to you no more confusion no more confusion we declare we declare as a prophetic voice as a prophetic voice to the body of Christ to the body of Christ unity, unity starting from now starting from now in Jesus name in Jesus name Zambia Zambia you are saved you are saved in Jesus name in Jesus name lift up your hands and shout amen amen put a two hands for Jesus wow. wherever you are Tonight, I want everybody, if you are from Zambia, you love Zambia, I want us, we are coming from different, different countries. There are others who are coming from Nigeria. There are others that are coming from Uganda, others from Zimbabwe, others from Botswana, others from Namibia, others from uh, 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 Swaziland, others from Lesotho. I want you to know tonight as you offer your prayer for the sake of Zambia God will hear your prayers. Amen. And your prayers will not go in vain. Amen. Says the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Those that are watching, do the same. And the Lord will bless you. Shalom. Shalom. Put your two hands for Jesus. Power.